Um, this is our very first of the 2021 Lunch and Learn series that we are kicking off here. Um, and we have this in webinar mode. So what you're going to be seeing is um, the presenter, Samantha Pitts, who's, who will, I'll be turning it over to her in a second. But I would love to know who's here. So if you wouldn't mind using the chat box to put in your name and where you work, that'd be great. Then we can say hi to you and kind of make this feel a little more communal. Um, we are so happy to be out of 2020, moving into 2021. Um, you know, we are all just going with the flow. So thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Levi, Carrie, um, Josh, I heard from Lindsay, you were on there, Ryan Moore. Hi, everybody. Um, before we go any further, though, I want to just say a couple of things. So the Lunch and Learn series is meant to be an opportunity for, oh, Leslie Mobley, hey, this is cool. Um, it's an opportunity for you guys to just get in a little bit of professional development. It's, it's going to be covering a wide range of topics, and um, this is a member-to-member -member benefit. So our members of the Home Builders Association are all the folks who are tied into the building and construction ecosystem. So we've got folks who can really help you on pretty much every level of your business building, your business needs, and responding to that. So this gives us a chance to give you a little more training on particular topics, um, maybe demystify a few elements, which is what we're going to be doing today. And then feel free to reach out to these folks afterwards if you have any questions, uh, because they really are the experts in the field. With that said, um, I want to make sure that it's clear that all of this is information today. So anything that you learn is just kind of like broadly informational, not specific to your situation. So especially when we're talking about insurance, it is very nuanced depending on your company, your situation, and, and customized to your exact needs. So um, Samantha's going to do her best to give us information that's helpful, but she is going to be painting with a broad brush. And then if you have any more questions on your own, reach out to your insurance agent, or if you need an insurance agent, she is ready and available to help you. So with that, I would like to introduce today Samantha Pitts with Elliott Insurance. She is a personal lines agent and marketer, and she is going to be just sharing with us a little bit more about the fascinating world of insurance, what happens behind the curtain, how, how are these numbers created for you, and we are very delighted to have her here today. Thank you so much, Samantha. I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, thank you. It is wonderful to see everybody here today. Um, it has been a while since I have seen many faces due to COVID, so it's really nice to hear from everybody. And I recognize a few of the names that came on today, so I'm excited to hear from you and see how you're all doing as well a little later. Um, but I will jump right in about who I am. I'm Samantha. I work with Elliott Insurance. I majored at CWU with marketing and in business, and then I never thought I'd work in the insurance industry at all. It happened to fall in my lap based off of family friends. And now I am so excited and love the field and found out it's pandemic proof. So I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> but I want to share to you just today about some broad areas of insurance. Um, if you aren't doing some things, maybe you could take a look and change it for yourself. Or if you need help, you're more than welcome to call my office or myself. We're always available to help in any way. And I can just jump right into my presentation for you guys. I'm gonna share my screen real quick. So we're gonna see if this works really simply. Okay. So I hope everyone can see my screen well, and that's good. So basically I'm gonna be demystifying insurance for you today and walking you through um, personal insurance. I am licensed in personal and I don't really do commercial, but I have plenty of people in my office who could help you if you do have further questions with that. Um, the first thing we're going to start with is our overview. Like I said, I'm going to go over homeowners insurance with you, auto insurance, some fun facts because I want to keep it light and fun and have a few laughs. Um, and then I'll go over some trivia, which you guys can answer in the chat box and maybe some things will shock you. 
And then if you have any questions, of course, I will take them at any time, but preferably at the end so that I can actually see your chat box. <laughs> okay, so starting out, um, I know I didn't put a whole lot of verbiage or words into it just to make sure that you guys can actually read everything um, and hear from it rather than trying to just write down notes as quick as possible. <laughs> Um, so first is bundling home and auto. 99% of the time I will recommend you bundle your home and auto um, because you would get a major discount. If you aren't doing it now, it's probably because you got a better rate somewhere else or because you were rushed into finding a quote when you bought your home. And I would highly recommend that you would contact us and see if we can help you bundle that. Um, and it's just overall so much easier to pay one company than two. And a lot of people actually don't pay their bills because they forget about that part. <laughs> um, and then one of the number one questions we get all the time is how much of a replacement cost they need. And I wanted to go over replacement costs versus actual cash value because people always go, well, my Zillow amount says that this is how much my home is worth but that is a completely different value than what should be on your insurance because we do it versus replacement cost. Um, if you have a mobile home, you're probably being insured for actual cash value, which is basically replacement cost minus depreciation over time. Um, but if you have a normal stick built home, 90% of the time your home is gonna be written with replacement cost. Um, and it basically refers to the amount of insurance that your company will pay to replace your home. And that's where it needs to be. It's part of the process. If your home burns, it catches fire into total loss. It's how much we can send somebody out there to try to salvage anything that needs to be taken out of there. Maybe there's photos that could be saved from a fire you had or dishware or anything. And then that cost also refers to tearing down the entire home, hauling it off, and then starting from scratch to build you a home of like kind and size. So it, it's more than just how much you can sell it for as is. It's how much inflation and everything we can get and make sure that we can build you a home that was like the one you had for prior. Um, now, one thing I wanted to go over was market value versus assessor value. Um, market value is how much your home is worth currently in the sales market. And currently Yakima's market value is very high if you've checked how much homes are selling for recently. It's a lot higher than what it was four years ago. Um, some people are even buying homes $100,000 over what the price was previously. Um, then your assessor value is based on the percentage of the appraised value, which is used to determine how much you pay in your property taxes. Um, we have clients all the time who so will be like, well, my home was just assessed for this amount. Um, I think that's how much should be my home insurance should cover. And we always have to to tear them away from that and explain that replacement cost is completely different than that. And the market value that you can sell for your home is also different than how much it would cost to tear it down and rebuild as well. Um, one thing that I wanted to go over, really, we push this a lot in our office and we require it with every policy we write is water backup and sewer insurance. Um, a lot of the times that this is an optional endorsement for many carriers, um, but we always highly recommend. Um, basically, if your entire sewer line were to back up and say flood your kitchen, most of the time, if you do not have this endorsement because say your two-year-old flushed a stuffed animal down the toilet and that's what caused the backup, that would not be covered under your insurance unless you have this endorsement. So you could be paying for one, your entire sewers to be cleared out and have that stuffed animal removed. And then also all the damages that it caused, say, to your flooded kitchen or living room due to that. And so it can be very expensive. Um, we write a minimum of $10,000 for it, um, and then it goes up from there. Um, if you don't have $10,000, I would recommend increasing it to minimum of that because typically it costs around $5,000 just to fix the sewer issue, not alone the cleanup of all the nastiness that comes from your sewer surrounding your entire house. Um, number one question that we get asked to is claims. Um, claims are different with every single carrier. That's why Emily probably did the disclaimer when we talked this morning. Um, 
because we want you, of course, to use your insurance policy. That's why you have it if anything happens. But I've had clients who want to file a claim based off of wear and tear or something super small, and they don't realize that claims follow you for five years. So if you were to file a claim based off of a tree falling down your backyard that didn't cause any damage, but you don't want to pay the $500 for someone to come out and remove it, um, you're probably going to pay more in your deductible than you will on that claim. And then it stays on your policy for five years. So we recommend that when you do use your claims, use it for more of a catastrophic loss, not the little losses, because one claim at $50,000 is the equivalent to still five claims at um, $50 less. Um, and Emily just asked, should someone call you first before deciding to file a claim? Yes, I always recommend calling your agent beforehand. Um, I have clients who will call and ask me and give me the whole situation. When it's water, I usually recommend calling JRCC or Baxter Construction or any local contractors in your area to get it fixed right away because the more it sits there, the more mold and mildew will gather. Um, but yes, always call us first. We'll probably recommend you get an estimate. And then after that, if it exceeds, I always recommend you call me back after the estimate. And then we'll discuss whether or not it's worth following through with a claim and calling the company and setting up, setting you up with an adjuster from there. Okay, moving on, if I can click the button, to auto insurance. So number one thing I have dealt with actually a lot recently, um, during COVID, I actually had a lot of people move in um, with family members. Um, I think it was just due to hard times and things that have happened. Um, we will always recommend that you add anyone who lives in your home who is a licensed driver, even if it's temporary, to your auto policy. If they live there for more than 30 days, you can be denied from a claim because they aren't listed on your policy. So say your mom moves in with you and you she has her own insurance policy, but you don't add her to yours. And after 30 days, she ends up getting her mail sent to your house and all this stuff that shows proof that she lives there. And she drives your car and gets in an accident. Well, your company, because if we file the claim through them, could deny that claim altogether because she's not listed. And then if you try to file through hers and she, say, hit someone else, there could be a lot more issues in that sense. Um, so always add people who live in your home to your policy. Um, if it's only going to be for like, say, six months, that's still six months. You should still add them. Um, and that's a great one to do. Um, gap insurance, which is another term basically for auto loan and lease coverage. Um, you probably, when you buy a car, they'll hand you a little pamphlet if it's three years from the production date and ask you, would you like to have this coverage? Um, most of the time, it's going to cost you a lot more to buy it through your dealer. Um, so always call your insurance company beforehand because I currently just bought a car and added it to myself. Um, at my dealer, it was like $900 for the entire period of my um, loan, where with my insurance, it's only $5 a month. So it's a huge difference in price and it can save you a lot of money. And also if you pay off your loan earlier, you can take it off sooner. And, or if you feel that you no longer need gap insurance when you have a year left on your loan, then you can remove it also. And you're not stuck paying that full $900 no matter what. And if people who don't know what gap insurance is, basically if you buy a, say you bought a 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee and you get in an accident about say eight months later and your car has since depreciated from the value of your loan. So when you go to total out in the claims process, it's going to actually cost you more um, because you're gonna still have a loan left over that you have to pay. If you have gap insurance, you can file that claim and then they can actually pay the remainder of that money for you. If that makes any sense, if that makes sense. <laughs> Um, also, I believe that covers for GAP. Let me exit out here. 
And then, so yearly rate increases. Um, we, that's the number one call we get because it's money. And so people call us every year and ask us why their rates have gone up or they'll even compare from the past five years of rates. The number one thing is inflation and technology. Um, cars are becoming more and more expensive to buy if you compare it from five years ago to now. Also, when you fix, a, say, a windshield, it's not just replacing the glass now. You now have to recalibrate your entire car to make sure that you have the sensors in front of you to make, allow you to stop and brake or warn you. And so whenever something like that gets replaced, it's not just $150, now it's $350 to go to the actual dealer and have them recalibrate your entire car. So we've noticed that over time, everything keeps going up due to that. And over time, it becomes more and more challenging. Um, I have a question from Ryan. Um, he asked, can you talk about the effect distracted driving is having on auto rates? Um, it is a huge deal. And I have a client who I actually am dealing with right now. I won't mention any names because <laughs> I can't. But they have had three texting and driving tickets within the past six months. And her rates quadrupled due to that. Um, a lot of people are getting in accidents due to distracted driving. And due to that, over time, it has caused the rates to increase because we are consistently filing more claims for it. And then also, if you do get a ticket for it, it's going to affect your rates a lot. That's why we have so much technology to prevent you from ever having to pick up your phone while you drive. So I would highly recommend utilizing it because people aren't realizing how much it's affecting them in the future. That was a great question, Ryan. Um, so being, I just graduated college about two years ago. Um, my number one question when I first got into this industry was when do you get off your parents' policy? Um, cause I thought, you know, I could just kind of like freeload as long as I possibly could. Um, but that's not the case. So like I had said about the household drivers, it does apply to your kids as well. Once they become financially independent, then they should be off your policy. So if they are graduated from college, because while they're in college, they are more than welcome to be on your plan. But once they graduate and move out and have their own place and power bill and all of that, they should really get off of your policy. And that's a question I get all the time. Um, getting the best deal. So what's nice about being a brokerage is that we can actually put your information into a competitive rater and go through about seven to eight different companies and they'll pull numbers for us to show where the best place is for you. And I never knew about this until I started in the industry. And so it's something that I really hope to try to express to more people. Um, it is something that is great because a lot of people just call whoever their parents are with or whom their friends have gone through. And that's the number that they'll just go with. And then they'll stay with them for long periods of time until it becomes too much money or something happens and a claim went wrong. This is the opportunity to always call and shop around, see what's out there for you and check it out. And we will always do the best to try to find the right company for you. If we're not the right fit, we'll also recommend other people as well that we are in the area. Because if State Farm happens to be the greatest place for you and that's the best, then we want you to really pursue what's best for you and what fits your needs. Um, now let me go to some fun facts. So I actually enjoyed looking up all of the crazy things that happen in our industry. Um, I never knew that alien adoption coverage existed in 1987. So I haven't heard any, anybody writing it recently, but maybe you need to travel to New Mexico to get it, <laughs> if that's a chance. Um, but mostly Lloyds of London writes that. Um, Gene Simmons um, insures his tongue for, for $1 million. Does it every year. Still doing it to this day. And I found that very, very interesting. Um, a lot of people actually insure their body parts. It's a very common thing. Um, in the 19th century, movie theaters bought insurance policies for death by excessive laughter. Um, I think the 19th century thought they were hilarious. And so they wanted to make sure if anyone died that they were covered and good to go. Um, 
So Emily asked a question, uh, does that mean if something happens to his tongue, he gets a million dollars? Yes, that is exactly what it means because that is his trademark for his symbol of his what he does and how he makes all of his money. And it is very weird, but it is actually very common. I, there's a few other celebrities that insure their legs and their smiles. So I guess if they were in a terrible car accident and it affected them, they would then it would all work out. Ryan put JLo insures her butt. <laughs> what the weirdest policy? What's the weirdest policy you have written? Um, honestly, I haven't written a lot of weird ones. I've written some weird houses before. Um, and I've had to remind people to pick up their trash when in like an inspector comes out to look at their home. Um, so that's probably my weirdest is having to tell someone to clean up before they go out there. But that's my probably my weird one. Um, and then I found out that a whiskey company did a competition um, to capture the Loch Ness Monster. And they were nervous that they so, would have so many people that captured it that they wouldn't be able to pay them all. So they decided to call Lloyds of London and they got insurance for their competition and they insured it. No one ever captured the Loch Ness Monster, but I thought that was pretty interesting that they did that. So I thought we'd do some trivia to see if anyone gets it right. Um, so if you have um, one of them and we can go through each one individually, please submit your answers in the chat box because I'm really curious if anyone can guess them. Um, the first one was, when was the first insurance contract signed? Does anyone have any guesses? I'll wait a few minutes and see what comes through on the chat. Okay, so it looks like Levi said 1492, Josh said 1555, uh, Babe Ruth, Morgan Stanley. Anyone else have any guesses? Also, don't Google it, that's cheating. Okay, my guess for the last one is Thomas Jefferson for Emily Jameson. We'll get to that one, I promise. <laughs> Any more guesses out there? Give it another minute. Okay, so for the first one, um, Levi, you were the closest. It's actually 1347 was the very first one that was ever signed. And it was actually in Italy, which I thought was very interesting. And I would have never guessed that. I actually asked every single person in my office and I got 1800s for most of them. So I was very surprised. Um, the next one is which major league baseball team has signed the same player for 23 years so he can keep his health insurance after suffering a major heart attack? Ryan already answered, and I will let other people guess as well to see if they can guess as well. So Ryan said the Padres. Jake said Red Sox. Um... And then for Levi, the question was, which Major League Baseball team has signed the same player for 23 years so he can keep his health insurance after suffering a major heart attack? Josh said Yankees, Levi said the Mets. So the actual answer, Ryan got it right. It was the San Diego Padres and it was Matt Latrapa. He uh, suffered a heart attack at 20 while warming up on the field. And to this day, he is confined to a wheelchair. And the Padres sign him every year so he can keep his health insurance. And he actually comes to the field still and meets all the guys and has a big part of their family. So I thought it was really cool. Yeah, I agree, Levi. I think that's very nice of them to do. And I thought it was kind of a 
warm touch to insurance and to the Major League Baseball. Um, so the next question is, which founding father is credited as the inventor of the insurance industry? I know that Emily said Thomas Jefferson. Does anyone else have any guesses? Josh said Morgan Stanley. Levi said Ben Franklin. Wait for a few more to come in real quick. So Levi, you actually got it right. It was Benjamin Franklin, who is credited with the inventor of the insurance industry. Um, he actually came up with a way that you could have placards that would show that you purchased insurance and it was put outside your door so that if your house ever caught fire, the fire department knew that they could actually put it to put it out and that you purchased insurance for them to do so. And if you didn't have the placard, most of the time they just let your house burn to the ground. So I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> okay. And so that is actually all I have for you guys today. Do you have any questions for me that I haven't already answered? And if you do, I know that Emily put my information a little while back in the comments. Um, we also have a Facebook page that I monitor pretty frequently. So if you have any questions or concerns on that, um, you're more than welcome to send them through there. And I want to thank you guys for coming on. I had a great time and I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with as well and watching all of yours in the future. And thank you so much, Samantha, for kicking us off here in January with the presentation and the lunch and learn. I love that you made it interactive and super interesting. Learned some fun things that I had no idea I ever needed to know. So thank you everyone for your participation. Um, we're really happy to see you all here. At least we can kind of connect virtually. We will see you again February. Um, okay, I don't have my calendar in front of me, but we're keeping it regular. The first Wednesday of the month at noon, and you'll see information from us on that. So some of you have submitted some proposals. We're excited about those, and it's going to be great. Again, thank you so much, Samantha. You made it really wonderful today. Aww. Happy New Year, everybody. Oh, Lindsay put it in our, our chat. February 3rd at noon. So if you want to put that in your calendars right now, go ahead and do it. And we'll get, we'll get that lineup out to you soon. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you. Guys. Bye. Bye.